All right, today we are going to read The East-West House, Noguchi's Childhood in Japan. So if you remember, we've read some books about Alan Say, and Alan Say, most of the books are told in Japan. So now we're going to read about Noguchi's childhood in Japan. Father's house in Tokyo glowed with moonlight through Shoji's screens. Shadows on the wall moved like waves as tiny fingers curled in play. With Mama, he had sailed countless days from America to this unknown place. Then a stranger father chose his name, Isamu, Mr. Courageous. And Miss Johnson apologizes in advance. I will not say all these names correctly. Now, father had another family. His home was not their harbor. Outside, a bamboo flute cried through barren trees and a chilly wind scattered leaves. Unwelcome, yet they remained never long in any place. They were Gajin, foreigners shunned by everyone. So if you are a foreigner, that means you are living in a country where you were not born. So these people are foreigners in a country where they did not belong or were not born. Together they explored Japan, sat silently in gardens. Isamu listened to wind and current. He held each leaf up close. He walked, watching shadows shift. Light on stone revealed secret colors. Water mirrored shapes above, a kaleidoscope in motion. Earth, rock, flowers, trees, these were Isamu's trusted friends. He dug deep to make his own stream and steered its course with a stone. At school, he tried to join in play, but others teased and turned from him. Left out and alone, Isamu made a different kind of joy. He molded clay to form a wave, then painted it blue like Mama's eyes. Holding soft earth in his hands, he almost forgot his loneliness. Mama bought a tiny wedge of land under Chigasaki Pines, an unwanted, awkward, sloping lot looking out to sea. Only eight, Isamu drew up plans to make a small, distinctive house, half eastern, half western in designs. It was a mixture like his own. He supervised construction, watched each detail with care. Evenings, he shared his notes with Mama, reports of his dreams growing tall. Three rooms laid out on the bottom floor and one large room on top. The builders done, now it remained for Isamu to add his touch. Apprenticed to a carpenter, he sculpted waves and cherry wood, carved panels for the sliding doors that moved from east to west and back again. So Isamu is probably best known for what at this point in the story? He nestled close to Mama's side as she read him myths of ancient Greece. Outside their window, Mount Fuji swelled, inspiration for Isamu to hold. With the world in his hands, his imagination soared, and where, emotion, where emptiness once lived, Asamu created home. So Asamu and his mother arrived in Yokohama, Japan on March 26, 1907, after a 17-day crossing of the Pacific Ocean aboard the steamship Mongolia, his father's abandonment and his own mixed racial and cultural heritage were constant sources of confusion and discomfort for Asamu. His hair was wavy and he wore western style clothing, which was so different from the Japanese children who bullied him regularly. Whichever, whatever situation I was in, I felt not quite one of them. 
Noguchi later said of his early social world, Leonie Gilmore provided education, inspiration, and direction in young Isamu's life. She witnessed the prejudice he experienced as a biracial child. She also noted his pleasure and skill in creating with his hands. So, Isamu was best known for creating works of art with his hands. So, he created all of these different um, statues and different objects with his hands. He created a house. So that is him in 1951, that is him as a little boy at the age of six, and then that was his mom and dad. Alright, so that is the story of Naguchi's childhood in Japan, also known as Isamu.